Good afternoon, Leo Barney. How you doing? You well? Very well, very well. Thank you for having me on your platform, man. No problem, man. I'm, I'm here to uh, discuss with you all things M NFTs, non-fungible tokens. Um, you are Mr. NFT. Um, and I say that because, you know, you're, you're fully immersed in this space at a, a level that most people won't really understand. We're going to touch on, you know, some of the non-complex stuff today, just for the newbies and those just venturing into this space to kind of make them aware of who you are, what you do, um, and hopefully you can kind of articulate, you know, what's really going on in this NFT space from, from your point of view. Um, a little bit about you though, beforehand, you know, and, and how you got into the NFT space. You do a whole load of things, Leo Garmo. I know there's many strings to your bow, but let's try and keep it focused on this one particular area. So explain NFTs for our audience, especially those who have just come across them and are trying to understand them um, and what the fuss is all about. Ah, uh, brilliant. So um, NFTs, are a byproduct of um, Ethereum smart contracts. And what that's enabled us to do basically is with smart contracts, we've been able to um, um, track ownership and track the value of digital assets. And because of this, what we're witnessing right now is a renaissance, uh, like a renaissance event where um, similar to what happened back then when um, people started investing, putting their money behind art in order to maintain um, the value of, of their liquidity. Um, we're seeing the same thing now happening to digital assets. So videos, um, images, sounds, um, all of those things are currently being traded on platforms online right now. You're the founder of um, NFT Community, like I said. Uh, how long have you been in the space? How long have you been producing NFTs? And, and just what got you started? Okay, so actually, uh, my career in art started um, uh, roughly about seven years ago, I'd say. Um, I had my first exhibition in the American Embassy for, month, for Black History Month. Um, I then uh, uh, co-founded a platform called Gallery de la Rue. Uh, with a few of my friends. Uh, we put on a series of exhibitions, um, one of them being in the Tate, um, called Impact Africa, um, Impact of Africa. Um, also, we did um, a um, unveiling of never seen before pictures of Bob Marley um, taken by um, actress and entrepreneur Esther Anderson, uh, which we um, hosted at the hospital club. Um, off the back of that, um, I started a, uh, a digital gallery on Instagram, um, which was called at the time Digital Artist Portal, where I was posting um, all of my favorite artists' um, pieces of work, basically. Um, and then a, well, um, last year, October, I started hearing a lot more noise about NFTs. Uh, NFTs started popping up. Um, on my radar and I started looking into it. Um, I didn't fully understand what was happening up until I'd say January, uh, which was when I had the epiphany to change my Instagram uh, name to NFT gallery, uh, NFT community. And um, since then it's been a, in, a very interesting journey. You've um, you touched on the fact that you're a digital artist first and I guess that's, that's I where everybody starts in it and forays into this space. Um, so talk about some of the inspirations for your, your pieces, you know, who, who has inspired you and especially some of the bits that we see on your Instagram page, because some of them are, you know, if you're, if you're new to NFT art, I guess that's a great segue for you to understand what's appreciated about, about the media. I mean, um, at the moment, NF the NFT space is a bit of a wild, wild west because obviously what's happened is there's been a massive boom. A lot of people are realizing that they can make money this way. Um, so you have a lot of people who are um, just trying their luck, to be honest. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's welcomed, of course, um, because the diversity is, is, is definitely needed. Um, and then you also have kind of seasoned um, career artists, digital artists that have been working in the industry for a long time and producing content for a long time who were predominantly doing it for um, uploading things online for free before um, and now thanks to the NFT boom what we're seeing is that those people are being re re remote, remote, what's the word I'm looking for? Remunerated? Remunerated <laughs> <laughs> I know what you do <laughs> 
But um, yeah, so we're, we're seeing um, revenues coming in for people who've been dedicating themselves and who didn't really have an industry per se uh, before. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, 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 it's very interesting. I mean, for myself, the inspiration behind some of my artwork um, that is on my Instagram, um, I'd say mainly actually um, it's, uh, the, uh, it's, it's myself seeking inspiration or see, um, the, I painted a picture, uh, the first uh, portrait that I was known for that got exhibited um, in the American embassy uh, was actually a portrait that I did um, of John Boyega wearing the, the Star Wars, uh, the Star Wars um, Jedi hoodie. And the reason why I did that was at the time um, I was looking for inspiration for myself and I just um, happened to see that the Star Wars cast was announced at that time. And I saw that John Boyega was on there. John Boyega being from Peckham, myself being from Brixton, I thought, you know what, that's quite inspirational. Someone from my area has reached the level of um, acclaim in, in his craft that I would like to reach for myself. So I thought um, uh, maybe by painting him, I'd, some of that inspiration and some of that, some of that um, vibration would, would, would seep into me. So I, I gave it a go, I created um, that painting. Um, at the time, I didn't know John Boyega. Um, and, uh, but through, through my process of painting him, I, I, I set an intention that I would give this painting to him. Um, this manifested um, after once it was complete, um, I then linked up with people who were connected to him. And then off the back of that, was able to present him with a copy of, of um, that painting, which he also signed. That's fantastic, man. I mean, uh, I like the way you talk as well in terms of setting intentions and manifestation is that is that where you find yourself right now are you in a are you in a point where everything that you've kind of uh envisaged everything that you've kind of been not waiting for but heading towards is it is it starting to manifest now uh what i'll say uh what i'll say on that is um i feel that regardless of whether we're aware of our intentions or not um our intentions and our inner thoughts are always manifesting themselves so um, if you're in a good situation or bad situation, I'd say it's worth checking yourself in meditation and seeing where are these things coming from. Because um, I, I um, currently, I'd say I've been able to reach a place of, of clarity where um, it's uh, very, what, what happens between my intentions and my manifestations seems to be very fast at the moment. So I, I, I'm in a place of, of being very grateful at the moment. Um, of giving thanks and um, applying the knowledge that I know. It's still very early in terms of mass adoption of NFTs. What do you see as factors that will increase interest? And I know you don't have a crystal ball, Leo Gami, but um, where can this all go? Where are the possibilities? What, is, what, is, what could happen? Well, I feel that uh, one, NFTs are here to stay. Um, I feel that we're going to see a lot more integration of NFTs, uh, especially in the are an er uh, arena of fashion and video games. Um, video games at the moment, we've got a few platforms that are already um, sort of um, using NFTs as a base uh, for their items. But we're, we're, but I'm, I'm talking about um, in-game in -game currency, uh, tradable items within games. Um, uh, so if, if you imagine, for example, play, you play Fortnite, somebody playing Fortnite would get a, a new, acquire a new skin for, for a weapon through doing a quest or something. And now imagine if that item was placed on a blockchain and was uh, in limited supply, that person could then trade that object in the value of you know whatever the market value is for it at the time or whatever the demand is for it at the time so i think we're we're, we're seeing the genesis of um uh, a sort of online economy um that is gonna um open the doors for a lot of uh, new content creators a lot of uh people who are going to be able to um enjoy and benefit from these nfts um i mean um, I was on a platform just yesterday, which was literally a VR, um, VR exhibition, VR exhibition space where you can literally put on a VR headset and headphones and walk through a, ga a digital gallery and observe NFTs, which you can bid for right there and then. I mean, um, 
yeah, I think that it's the, 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 the potential for it is very scalable. And um, I think it's proven itself to be very popular amongst um, the people. So I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I think it's, gonna, it's here to stay. It's here to evolve. I think we're going to see a lot of uh, pioneering work coming from uh, a lot of different uh, industries, actually, getting involved with NFTs, um, music, uh, fashion. The, 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 the sky's the limit, really. I guess, I guess we should explain collectibles a little bit about those. Yes, yeah, sure. So um, collectibles, the best, way that, the best way to explain collectibles is um, if, you, if, you, if you imagine yourself um, back in secondary school with uh, tradable football cards or collectible Pokemon cards or whatever, it's literally the same thing that's happened, but it's transferred to digital um, assets. So now what we're seeing is uh, people creating all types of different um, collectible, other collectible, other collectible cards or collectible thumbnails or collectible pieces of uh, of work that um, either it, 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 it either illustrates um, it could illustrate a a uh, it could be about anything basically. It could be about a, a, a sports person. It could be about an actor. It could be about um, anything that's that's relatable to to the masses, but people are creating them into these tradable cards and selling them on the putting them on the blockchain and uh, basically selling them. Um, as we've seen with for some of the examples like crypto crypto punk, uh, for example, has done really well. Um, yeah. The um, I mean, what is how do you how does the organic quantify value of NFTs purchased? You know, um, what makes one more expensive than another? At, at the moment, um, they're, they're, that answer is twofold. Um, I would say one aspect of it is uh, people with a large following already online. So artists that have already built their communities, who people already want their work. As um, soon as they've placed themselves on the blockchain, we've seen them do really well. People like Beeple, Mad Dog, and others. Um, and then also you've got um, uh, people like Furious, who is a 17-year-old young boy who basically um, cr created a piece of art uh, which depicted his mental health. It connected with people and his artwork sold and he's now, um, uh, I think he's ranked number two right now or number four. I have a number number four as the top selling um, crypto artist behind Beeble. So um, I think it, yeah, so I think it depends. I think what's really interesting about this whole um, system is we, we've got to understand the term decentralized first and what it means. And, um, and I feel that all these platforms that are decentralized, which I guess means that they are running in a way where equality or um, horizontal level of uh, power distribution is enabled um, with that with that uh, with that behind it with that sort of philosophy behind it um, what we're seeing is equal opportunity for a lot of people because it doesn't matter if you are if you have a big community today or if you don't um, as long as you're creating artwork that relates to somebody it's almost like it's brought art back to what it's supposed to be I feel as a as an artist um, I feel that uh, my experience within within art um, within the art industry is that it's become a lot about the money, but not necessarily about the artist per se or, or the art. It, those things are, are sort of become secondary, and art has sort of become a thing of you need to just get your art on an important wall. Um, and the beautiful thing that we're seeing with NFTs is the important wall is your screen. Um, and getting and and thanks to to what's to, to what what's going on, they're they're able you're able to to communicate your art and get your art across to uh, to the whole world, um, and also auction um, twenty four seven literally without a gatekeeper, without um, having to pay a middleman or without having to get a manager. You can literally just get up and do it yourself and manage the whole process. And I think a lot of the people that are doing really well at the moment are engaged in those practices. And I think that's what's really fantastic right now. Without getting too complex then, explain minting and, and reproducing M and NFTs 
to either make money or to to boost the you know the profile of the artist who created the original. Okay, so um, the term minting um, basically just refers to putting your artwork or your yeah your work on the blockchain. Basically, once you've listed your art on the blockchain, a smart contract is created, which enables Ethereum to track the owner of the art of the piece of art and also. Uh, track its value how much someone has bid for it so actually as well the beautiful thing about that is that is that you're getting actual real data on the value of your artwork um, as opposed to uh, getting an appraisal from a professional or something like that who's supposed to tell you what, how much this artwork is worth the people themselves are, are voting online by putting them putting their money where their mouth is I suppose um, so that's that's what minting is um, what's the second question no, it was just more in regards to reproducing the work to make money or or, right. or to boost the profile of the original artist, which I, I can see is a genuine intention of some people who buy the art. You know, they, they only want to second sell it on, second sell to, to help the original artist or, um, you know, to, to, to kind of boost their name and get their work out there. It's not always it's, about the money. That's what I'm noticing. Yeah, it's, it's twofold. It's twofold, though, because at the same time, it, it, I think for a collector, uh, from what I'm hearing, it's kind of not about the money, but it's also about the money. I think um, you have some collectors who are literally just smart money investors and they go after the top, uh, top ranked artists, pieces of work. And what they do is literally they, they get it for the, for the asking price and then they flip it on the secondary market. Um, which is the beautiful thing, actually. This is how we've seen uh, the rise of, uh, you know, Beeble and some of the other really great crypto artists who've done really well. It's been in the secondary market. Because uh, um, as well, something that we should mention as well is that um, when you mint a piece of work, what happens is as, as the artist, you are able to retain some ownership over the royalties. So you can retain up to 20% of your of the value of your artwork. So once it's being resold, you are given uh, a passive income per se, a residual income from those sales. So that's that's kind of why um, that's really that's really where the value is. It's really where the value is. You've got your own drop coming very, very soon. Um, so how, where, why, when can people grab their self an original Leo Gami? Talk to me. When's well, the drop? Well, the, we, we, we haven't got a date for the drop just yet. Um, but what we're doing is we're currently in the process of uh, putting a collection together, um, which is going to be a compilation of um, some of my original work that I've done in the past with one uh, one new piece of um, work that I'm, that I'm minting. Um, to find out about my, my latest drop, please follow my Instagram at leogami and also follow um, at NFT community for, for to find out the latest. For the, for the newbie, um, Leo Gami, how, how do they, you know, where do they go to see more NFTs? What sites, you know, rareable? We know what they are, but I want you to quote them. Start, you know, how can they start their own correct collection and even create their own NFT? What, you know, how can they, how can they get involved in the game in that, in that respect? Uh, creating your own NFT is really easy. I think um, it's literally about your creative mind and the tools you're comfortable with. A lot of people are using Photoshop. A lot of people are using um, After Effects, Cinema 4D, ZBrush, all those type of 3D software. But at the same time, you're getting people who are just shooting things on their phone, um, content, or even audio as well. Um, so it's, re it's re it really depends on your on your medium of comfortability of how you express yourself as an artist. And with regards to some of the platforms where you can find uh, crypto art, you've got uh, or where you can start minting your pieces. You've got OpenSea, you've got Nifty Gateway, uh, you've got Foundation.app, um, you've got what else? Just hold on, actually, let me let me just have a look quickly because I, I think this part is quite important. Uh, Yeah, Maker's Place, Mintable, uh, Mintbase as well, Cargo Marketplace, uh, Known Origin as well. Um, yeah, so there's still quite a few places. Look like the top five, I'd say. Okay, all right, cool. There's going to be those who like the art, but mm -hmm. don't get the whole 
movement don't get the concept of paying all this money in some cases um because it could be paying very little money the scale mm. the scope is, is wide open um for their pieces but it, it's stuck in their phone it's stuck you've already you've already touched on the vr concept um so just explain other ways in which people can kind of expose this art um even if they don't kind of uh, exist today in a in a in a in a totally accessible form how do you see people being able to show this art off um if not now in the future oh i i think um i think there's going to be a couple of ways one of them is going to definitely be video games um people put uh, people using there there's going to be ways for us to show off either through your characters in a video game or through your collectibles within the video game you're, you're going to be able to do that um i think as well wearables uh, fashion i think it's going to revolutionize fashion mm. we're just waiting to we're just waiting for something like that to happen i guess um I, actually i was in a clubhouse uh, uh, room the other day actually um and one of the conversation i heard was a a young lady who creates nfts which are wearables mm. but once you buy them you get a qr you, you get a qr code uh, which leads you to the obj files which are the 3d files you can then take that obj file to a 3d printer and print the clothes to wear wow crazy mad innovation love it 2021 Listen, mm -hmm. I know you. I appreciate your time, and we've we've done a good twenty minutes here. Just before we go, who who inspires you in this space? You know, looking at some of the art out there, do you see a future where these artists and and pieces are revered more so than artists of maybe you know present or yesteryear? Yeah, uh, well, I think that's already happened already. Um, I think it hasn't. A lot of people haven't caught on, but. Um, you have it, uh, you know, Beeple went down in history the other day as the fourth most well-paid artist of all times. Um, so I think it's happened already. We're just at the start of it. Um, it you know, it's kind of like, I mean, when I, when I talk to people and I try to put it into perspective for them, this is the equivalent of like being around at the time of the Mona Lisa and picking it up for like 30 quid and holding on to it till now. Um, it's the same thing. We're, we're literally at the genesis of it. Um, the scalability for the future is already um, a part of the whole movement of the whole um, smart contract thing. So, um, man, I, I just I just think right now it's, it's a it's a it's a bit of a gold rush that we have right now. Long may it continue, Leo Gami. Thanks for your time and and breaking down. NFTs in this short interview. I'm sure we're going to be revisiting this a few times over the years going forward. But um, right. until the next time, good luck, man, with everything you do. All right. Thank you very much.